Hi, I'm Mike Anderson from SA Institute, and I'm going to be talking to you about cables and connectors. The first thing you have to know about cables and connectors is that there are both analog and digital connectors. Digital connectors are used to transfer electrical signals from device to device, whereas analog cables are used to connect physical sound devices to another physical sound device, for example, a microphone or an instrument. Let's start with a very basic analog cable. The main one that everyone probably knows by now is the XLR cable. It's used to connect microphones, mixing desks, or preamps. The XLR cable comes in male and female. This is the male side, and if you take it apart, it has got a three-point pin on the inside, meaning that this is a balanced XLR cable. Here we have a Focusrite 8920 second generation. We have two preamps in the front. Both of them are combi jacks. One can be a jack, and it can also be an XLR. If we look at the back of the interface, you'll notice that we have the same thing as well. How do you connect an XLR to this? We take the receiving end of the combi jack and we plug the male into one of the channels. From the XLR, we also get a different type of connection. It's not the same type of connection, but it's still an analog connection. We refer to this as a TS or TRS cable. This particular TRS cable is male, this one's female. And with this particular female one, we don't really use this too much in studio, but what we mainly use it for is for headphone extensions or to make cables longer. The TRS cable or tip ring sleeve is a balanced cable. Whereas on the TS cable, it is an unbalanced cable. This is also known as an instrument cable. You also get different sizes of jack cables. You get a 3.5 millimeter like this one, which is can be stereo or mono. You also get a 2.5, which is a smaller one than this. But then you also get the big one, which is a 6.5 millimeter, also known as a quarter inch jack. Up to this point, I've mentioned balanced and unbalanced. What does this mean? I am referring to signal. An unbalanced signal is a signal that is produced by one conductor and it is the purest sound you get. We usually use this in TS cables to get an instrument like a keyboard or a guitar from one point to another. A balanced cable has two conductors and the two conductors are out of phase with each other, creating a cleaner sound. Which one is better? There's no better, they have different applications. We usually use in studio balanced cables like XLRs and TRS to get a clean possible sound. However, unbalanced cables are used on instruments to get the purest of sound. Unbalanced cables tend to have electrical interference, especially over long distances, which is why they are only used mainly for instruments. Another type of analog cable that gets confused with the jack cable is the Banton cable. Again, these come in two different sizes. If you're looking closely, these guys do not look the same as the jack cable. They are more rounded and they have got indentation over here, but they are still balanced cables. These cables are primarily used for patching. We have our Neve Genesis G32 over here and a lot of external gear happening as well. If we wanted to connect an external piece of gear like a reverb unit, we would use a Bantam cable in our patch bay to patch in an external instrument or an external piece of gear. The next analog cable you get is known as the speak-on cable. The speak-on cables, and we don't use these in studio too much, but this speak-on cable is a live cable. It comes in two, four, or eight pole configuration for you to use as a multi-core, or you can have single ones like this one. The speak-on cable is used to connect amplifiers to speakers on a live stage. This can either be monitors or the front of house. To plug one of these guys in, take the cable, it's got a locking mechanism, it will go in and you will twist. 
allowing it to stay in place in live shows. To release it, you have to pull out the latch, twist, and pull out. The last analog cable we are going to look at today is the RCA and SP diff. The RCA, or the Radio Corporation of America, are unbalanced cables. These guys are used mainly for CD players, or hi-fis, or cassette players, and they carry a digital signal if they have coaxial audio. That is, would be for the Sony Philips or SP diff interface. The red and the white ones can send and receive two channels 24 bit at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz sample rate. These support compressed surround formats such as Dolby DTS on some devices. You also get a yellow one, which we don't have here, which will be used for video. Now that we've dealt with the analog signals, there are a few other ones, but those are the basic ones. Let's now deal with digital cables. The first one we're going to look at is the ADAT cable, also known as the optical cable. ADAT, or Alesis Digital Audio Tape, is a cable that uses a TOSLINK connector and is fiber optic, which means it does not have electrical interference. What do we use this for mainly? If we take our 18 over here and look at the back of it, we have our opticals in and out over here. And if we plug the out, plug it into the out, that means it is sending an out signal into a different interface. That means you can use this ADAT cable as an expansion to this interface. So if you had another 18920, you could link it to that one as well, giving you 16 channels of audio. The one drawback is that you cannot use it in high definition unless you eliminate four more channels. This cable works at a sample rate of 48 or 44.1, which will give you eight extra channels. But if you work in high definition, like 96, you will have to cut your channels in half because of how it works. The next digital cable we're going to look at is the word clock, also known as the BNC, also known as the MADI cable. This was developed by Neve and SSL to connect and sync up different pieces of hardware using time. On a word clock cable, it has a BNC connector. This is used to connect to, say, our focus right over here. It will say word clock out. You would connect it. And this will send a signal out, which allows it to sync in time with another piece of equipment. There are two more digital formats that I haven't spoken about here because I can't really show you them at this point, but this is what they look like. The first one is the AES EBU cable. This is not to get confused with an XLR cable. The AES or Audio Engineering Society and EBU European Broadcast Union cable is also much easier referred to as the AES-3. It's considered the professional version of the SP diff. It transmits balanced, high quality signal further than SP diff, and it can receive two digitally compressed channels over one cable. If you expand your card into a high definition, you'll obviously need two cables. The last cable that we're going to talk about today is the TDIF or the Tuscan Digital Interface. This sends and receives eight channels at 48 kilohertz with one multi-core. It is commonly connected with a DB25 or D-sub connector with multiple breakout cables. These cables are generally used to plug in digital interfaces into analog gear, such as plugging in the Neve into one of the 192s that we have over here. 